has the full truth. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. even with the King James Bible, as as very uh, as as, as cause this is a great work. King James, this is a great work. You've got 56 of the world's best scholars to translate the Bible from Hebrew and Greek into English for us to read. But even though you, he did that, it's still not 100, you know, right because. From when you take a when you do a translation from Hebrew to Greek or Hebrew to uh, English, you lose words. Yeah. Why? Because in the Greek or in the Hebrew, you don't have the word J, E, or U in there. Right? That's not, those words are not in the in alphabet of the Hebrew. Okay. So yeah. when you translate to English, which you do have J, E, or U, you're going to come up with the name of Jesus Christ. But if you look in the original text, there's no, there's no name of Jesus Christ in there. So that's not his real name. And this is not his real identity, according to the scriptures. A lot of people say, oh, this is the white man's book. Why are you reading it? It's been tampered with. Well, if it's the white man's book, why would he say in the book that this is what he looks like? Because it says that in Revelation that he's a dark-skinned man. Yeah. The white man don't like black oh, people. Oh, he's Carmel and Asian. No he's, no, he's not. He's actually, if he was here today, he would look like a Negro. Yeah. With woolly hair. And it tells you that in the scriptures. Yeah. It tells you that in the Bible. Yeah. Now this is Psalm chapter 68 verse 11. The Lord gave the word, yeah. great was the company of those that published it. Great was the company of those that published it. Because King James, a king, a king of Europe, king of Scotland, what he did, he got the world's best uh, scholars to break down this word. That's why he says, was what? Read that again. He says, the Lord gave the word, uh -huh. great was the company of those that published it. So the Lord gave the word, the Bible was here, and great was the company, so great people, great men, that published it. That's it right there. Showing you that this is the this is the best version to hear because guess what? In the NIT, uh, uh, the English version, they're, yeah, they're missing parts of Mark 8. There's, there's, there's actually, there's actually 17, yeah. 17 missing scriptures. Missing Mark, missing 8, scriptures. Mark 8 and 15 is one of them. Yeah. yeah. So those they're taking those things out. And guess what they write on the bottom? They write probably wasn't in the original Some manuscripts. Research. But how do you know if you take it out? It's, it's exactly. Make it makes sense. no sense. Show yeah. you this higher this people. There's higher ups who are trying to do away with this because it has the truth. This is the truth. Yeah. This is true wisdom above everything. Yeah. This is Second Peter chapter one verse twenty. Knowing this verse that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Private interpretation means uh, 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 like lying because the scriptures you have men set up to break this down to you simple. Okay, simple and plain because people nowadays think. True wisdom is something that's very complicated. Yeah. You know, true wisdom is taking something very complicated and making it simple. Because when you take something that's complicated and make it simple, it means you actually understand it. So you can say it in your, you can say it in a simple way as how you understand. That's how we can bring examples out, analogies, paint, uh, paint illustrations of what we're saying. If we didn't understand it, we couldn't do that. So in the churches, though, they're doing it in private interpretation. Because guess what they'll do? They'll say. Jesus Christ loves everybody. The Lord loves everybody. But then when you go to a scripture where the Lord says, I don't love everybody and I hated Esau, but I love Jacob. Right. Yeah. So you're lying. That's private interpretation. Mm -hmm. They know they're only doing it off their own mind. Huh. You understand? That's what that is. But this is not a private interpretation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because you know, with this truth, there's some sweet and bitter. Yeah. You know, but with this church, it's all the teachings about the sweet, but not the bitter. Exactly. But, but the scripture tells you to teach the whole thing. That's why the Lord says that you know He came in the bottom of the book. So that means from the book of Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation, you got to be able to teach all of it, all of it, all at once. That's the real truth. Now this is verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved. By the Holy Spirit. Because everybody says, oh, well, this is a book that was written by man. Yeah. So, and man lies. And some, some people believe that this was all, people heard voices in their head. But what you don't understand is, it wasn't written by man. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was written, that yeah, men read it, but they've written it, they, they wrote it under the inspiration of God. So the Lord literally put the Spirit on them. And that's why when they had dream, when they slept, they would have dreams, and they would see things, the Lord would talk to them in their dreams. Oh. It tells you that. Now, that's that. That is something that you have to have faith to believe in. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can't just. But you can't. You won't believe this Bible unless you have faith. So, do you guys belong to an organized church? No, this is our church. The church is a body of people. We don't go because the Lord says it doesn't dwell in temples made by hands. Right. Which a temple made by hands is the church. 
They say, say that. that. So we are, honestly, you don't need to be in a church praising the Lord to do the work. And the Lord actually told you to do the work. You have to be. You should be out in the chief concourse spaces downtown where there's multiple people because this is about waking a certain amount of people. Yeah. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. It's about waking the, 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 the elect. Because once the elect are awoken, then all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's going to say, and the Lord's going to do away with all the wickedness here. Huh. This is Acts 17, 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with man's hands, as though he need anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. There you go. Now, yeah. Now with these people, they say you know where where like you know I'm a where like you know I'm a two or three are gathered in my name. They are in the midst of them. But these people in these churches, they don't know the name of the Lord, so therefore the Lord is not even there. Exactly, because in all these churches, they're not saying the true name. That's what right. are they saying? They're saying Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ and God. Exactly. So when they're in those temples, God can say two or three in my, in my name. name. In my name. Yeah. So for instance, what's your name? Dennis. Dennis. But if I say, hey, Matthew, are you going to turn around and look at me? So why, is the, why in the world would the Lord answer you if you're not following your name? If well, you what's, what's 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 his name? Then? His name his his the father's name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh. Yahweh, not Yahweh. Yahweh. Well, it's just basically his Yahweh has a, isn't it? Yahweh yeah. is a spin-off. Yeah. Of spin-off of Yahweh Shai though. Yeah. Uh, Yahweh has a U in it. And in the Hebrew, because right, right, Jesus Christ, everybody calls Jesus Christ the Hebrew, he's the Israelite. So and the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites, so his language would be Hebrew. Right? And in there, you don't have the U in there. But Yahweh, you show it Y A W U H. No, he spoke Hebrew. Hebrew. It told you that when he spoke to Paul, and when he knocked Paul off the horse, he said he told them his name in the Hebrew tongue. Oh, okay. Up on your feet, okay. This is Zechariah 14 and 9. Yeah. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. And his name one. Some people in the churches believe that the Lord has 99 names. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he just said, dark. exactly, exactly. Yeah. He just said his name should be one. And one name only. Oh, but what do you mean one? You have Jesus, Yahweh, Jehovah. Those are all titles. Those are all titles. Just like, for instance, if I'm a, if, if I'm a mechanic and I fix cars, my title is a mechanic. But I have, I have an actual name. Right? Oh, that's Akeem the mechanic. Right? So you would say, oh, Yahweh God or Yahweh Lord, in which God means power. So Yahweh power, because that's what he is. It's a title. Okay, not the name. And the name is an important thing. Because like I said, if you're not gonna answer me when I call you the opposite of the, uh, the wrong name, why in the hell would you send the Lord with you? Oh, okay. Makes no sense. Alright, take care, man. This is Um, so, so, so I'm, uh, we could turn unto the people, you know, by his name. Oh. Oh, Father. Father? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, how did you guys uh, stumble across what appears to be as several disputations of what? Well, we got taught by other uh, other men, like elders. Yeah, you got men, elders, who've been doing this for like 30 plus years and taught us. We, we watched them through the YouTube because we put this on YouTube so we can get the whole world, right? Get the world on a wider scale. So, you know, we, uh, we, we watched them on YouTube and it made sense. It, just, it clicked. It made sense. Because yeah. it's, it's the truth. It has the answer. It, 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 when you get into it, you literally have the answer to everything that you're questioning in history and in, and in, in, the, and in the future, you know? Like for example, the slave trade is in the Bible. That's how you know who the real Israelites are. That's it's not everybody who stays. <laughs> what? Slaves? Yeah, technically everybody is slaves. Yeah, technically is. But uh, what happened to the Israelites was the worst, was the worst type of slavery. You know, it tells that in Daniels that there's never been anything worse done to any other people, roughly paraphrasing, that has been done to Israel. That slave, that slave versus the slave trade. Those guys, the real Jews, 
or the Negroes. The real Jews are the Negroes, not those Israelis or Jewish people living in Israel right now. Has the word Jewish, the word of suffix behind it, the I-S-H, means pertaining to. So for instance, your, your shirt is brownish, but it's not actually brown. They're Jewish, but not actually Jews. A, a big thing that these higher up these elites do that people don't understand is they play with words. They do a thing called word magic. Word magic is it, it, it literally is powerful. If you don't know, if, or if you don't understand the, the etymology, the meaning of the words you're speaking, yeah. you're automatically a fool. Yeah. You're the etymology, the etymology is a big deal. It's important because yeah. etymology is the essence. It's literally the essence of a word. Yeah. The word, the et word et etymology means the study of truth. Yeah. Because for instance, the etymology of an apple is the seed. That is the true form of it. You know what I found interesting? I I I, 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 had, I had called I had come across this book called Mysteries of the Alphabet. Oh yeah. And I looked at the first letter A, and then I thought to myself, Well, Jesus says not, Jesus said I am the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha, from its original translation, came from the word ox, Aleph. Yeah. So it was a horned animal. Yeah. Yeah. So I am. So in other words, I'm. I'm both. I'm the boss. Like I'm the oh, man. Alpha and Omega. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it means in the Greek. Know that scripture? Yeah. Read that scripture. This is the book of uh, Zephaniah, Zephaniah, chapter three, verse nine. For then will I. For then will I turn, to the people. A pure language. Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language. A pure language. Okay, a pure language. What language is that? That's, that's the question you should be asking something you read that. So what's that language that the Lord's going to turn it to people with? It's, it's, Israel, uh, it's Hebrew. Yeah. That's where his the people. Original. The original, exactly. Yeah. That's, where, that's, the, that's actually the original language that was spoken. Everybody spoke that language before um, before the Tower of Babel, when the Lord scattered everybody through different languages, so they couldn't build the tower anymore. So the only language he's dealing with is Hebrew, because that's where his people are out of. That's the only thing he's dealing with. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord. So in this pure language, they have to call upon the name of the Lord. How can this two languages be English when English was just created like nothing but a couple hundred years ago? It has to be another language. It's obviously the Hebrew. Hence why when we read this Bible, something that these, none of these other passages do, is that we go into the Hebrew and in the Greek. We don't just read it face value in English and, and take it how it is. Right? For instance, when it, for instance, heart. Every time you see the word heart there, it actually means your mind because when you look up the word heart in the Hebrew, it's the word, it says lab, which means the mind. Yeah. So a lot of people think when, it, when, the, when, when, the, when it's talking about the heart, it's not talking about the heart as beating. No, all your heart does is beat, it doesn't think for you. I always thought of it as the core. Literally, and the core of your body is your mind. Yeah, the core of your existence. It's, exactly, it's your mind. Because your heart doesn't do anything, it doesn't feel, or, it's just the muscle that beats, that pumps blood. But people, through not understanding words, believe that the heart thinks, it feels, or like for instance, I wear my heart on my sleeve, yeah. you know, that means I catch feelings a lot. No, that's your mind. Your mind stimulates the feelings. Your mind controls your 